I have ever had sexual intercourse. Of course, if it has occurred to you already, having only just met me, don't you think it will have occurred to someone before you? Some man, some time, who would have found it quite easy to find me alone some night? Of course. Although I have no arms or legs, the rest of me is quite normal. My face is even beautiful. I know this. People are not afraid of flattering me or giving me a sweaty head because I have no arms or legs. They don't even say it to me, really. I just hear them as they walk by. My God, she is beautiful. They say to each other in very tones of incredulity. How could a freak, they ask themselves, have been blessed with such beauty? That is why people are afraid of me. I have a lover, as a matter of fact, a very sweet man. He is the man who cleans up the animals' cages. His name is Matthew. Good, solid, biblical man. Run away to join the circus. Or more precisely, Mr. Flip's Freak Show and Traveling Jungle. Matthew said he fell in love with me the minute he saw me. But I think he just made that up later. I think he just wanted to get out of that little town. But he's in love with me now. Every night, after he's done shoveling out the elephant shed, he comes to see me. He watches himself thoroughly first. I am the only person who gets to see him clean. If you were to pass him by when you this tent, you will never guess he's my lover. He looks just like any other mud boy during the day. Ah, you must see him at night. He parts the curtain and tiptoes into the hollow freaks. I watch him walking toward me, hair still wet, clean pursuit, loving his eyes. We are silent so as not to wake the others. Open the big head is awake anyway, singing little songs to himself. Matthew lifts me up and carries me out, back to his bed. Pallet of sweets throw in the wagon, listening to the animals settling into their sorrow for the night. Sweet pallet of straw, and to be off this display for precious moments. Hell, it's a bit of heaven. A small, manageable bit. Sometimes he takes me out for a walk in the woods at night. If the weather is good, sometimes he lays me down and we make love in a field. This is exciting because of the danger. How will he ever explain it if we got caught? It will look really bad for him. I will never be blamed. I have no arms or legs. I think the old farmer who discovered us will have a heart attack and die in this spot thinking that he had to chase off a pair of young lovers and finding instead a man and a torso? <laughs> you can tell that I am well taken care of. My appearance is neat. I am properly fed. This is all, by the way, because I am beautiful. I have no doubt if I were born only, I would have been thrown in a pit before I was five. But as I say, I am well taken care of. My hair is brushed, my teeth are brushed, I am washed, I am well taken care of. There are some days sitting here silent, hour after hour, being stared at when I will gladly commit murder to be able to scratch my nose. Only once have I been taken against my will. The night that Matthew sold me. It's actually not a very interesting story. I would rather not go into it. Just what you would think. You can fill in the details. Rich man, some town you're passing through, got that idea about me. The one we discussed earlier. He asked around. The boy shrugged, said, ask Matthew. Coincidentally, Matthew and I had talked with Ellie the night before about the pinhead. I had hurt him very badly, so Matthew decided to hurt me back. <coughs> He came in and warned me first, though. He was crying already. When the rich man came and took me, I didn't make a sound, didn't say a word. I could have been the mute with no arms and no legs for all he knew. In the end, it was much worse for Matthew. He cried at the foot of my pedestal all that night and for many nights to come. It took me a while to forgive him. That was really a rotten thing to do after all. I was very frightened, but I was morally in the right, and Matthew was not. That's why it was worse for him. 
he learned something about himself, something he didn't want to know. I certainly would have never guessed it was in him. After it happened, I knew I shouldn't have been surprised, but I really believe that Matthew was one human being without that astounding capacity for cruelty. I am in love with the thin head. That is the tragedy of my life. And perhaps it is also the tragedy of the man who cleans out the animal's cages. But I don't think so. He's still young. As am I, but I seem much older because I have never moved from this spot. Matthew will leave the freak show, whereas the pink and I will not. He is still young and filled with belief and love for me. Jesus, he practically forced to death. One day he will realize the cruelty of an absent dog, and he will leave. I know the pinhead has the capacity for sexual intercourse, because they have to put something in his food so he doesn't play with his thing while the audience is here. <laughs> I love to hear him sing. I have never told him of my love because that would break his heart. He's neither tall enough to reach me here, nor strong enough to carry me. If he were aware of the possibilities, he would go mad in his cage. I am the only one strong enough to suffer in this love of ours. Sometimes we speak. I ask him to sing songs for me. He likes that. He's proud that he remembers things. You have no idea what it takes not to go mad. Many are. But I cannot do that. I have responsibilities. How rude of me. Allow me to introduce my fellow abominations. I believe you already met the pinhead. Oh. Aqua Boy, the human salamander. Captain Water from 12 to 14, who would then turn some luminous pale shade of green. Eyes growing bigger, breathing slowly. More often than not, the water was quite cold, bringing up the blue blush under his translucent skin, like a salamander shifting blue to green. Biggest eyes you've ever seen. After a year in the water, they begun to flood with gold, bulging beautiful like the eyes of a dove. The angle of his neck, hair floating on water, everything changed. Once you got used to it, it was colder out than in. He would piss in the water, trying to make it warmer if only for a minute, then drink so he could do it again. Ice cream rolled above the water, mouth open slightly, taking the water in, warming it for a time in his insides. Drain this tank and you pour my soul out on the floor. Isn't he beautiful? You would never guess he showed up here just an undernourished boy with a bit of extra skin between fingers and toes. It, it takes an artist to make a transformation like that. It takes Mr. Flynn! I am not a bad man. Bodies 